What's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton, joined by Detective Walton. Glenn, how are you? I'm good. We had a weird day yesterday. Yeah, I know. It was so weird. (laughs) And it ended with us taking Bureau outside for a walk. And you're like, oh, look. And I look down thinking I'm going to see a rattlesnake because that's typical. And instead, it's this giant tarantula just Uh, walking across our yard, which is pretty awesome. He was so friendly, too. Yeah, a little too friendly. (laughs) Uh, At first, I was like, man, I wonder if he's someone's pet that got out or something. Because every time I got close to him, he just wanted to come out. But because the sun was almost down, I'm pretty sure he just came out to start hunting. So then I'm like, okay, maybe he thinks I'm food. Yeah. (laughs) Abandoned. Abandoned mission. (laughs) Abort, abort. So I titled today's episode, The Atlanta Walmart Substation. Is it a real solution to robberies or just a Band-Aid? If you have no idea what I'm talking about, just sit back and relax and enjoy today's content because this is pretty crazy to me. So I'm going to link an article down below that says Walmart takes bold step to combat rising crime in retail with in-house police station. It goes on to say that Walmart closed 22 stores due to safety concerns so far in 2023 alone. A recent survey found that at least 60% of retail employees reported encountering some form of violence in the past year. That's a high statistic. Yeah, that's very high. This whole year, you and I have been talking a lot about retail theft. Yeah, it's, it's, it's increasingly becoming a bigger and bigger problem with states like decriminalizing a lot of the theft in general, you're, you're going to see this happen more. Yeah. And so obviously these stores, they want to be able to stay open and in certain states, it's becoming near impossible to run an honest business, especially like here in California, where we are now making it, for example, um, illegal to fight back if you're an employee. That's why these employees, I think that could be a contributing factor, why those stats are so high, right? They also have this major fear factor where there's nothing that they can do except for freeze in place and be a victim because for a lot of these corporate organizations, and again, depending on what state you live in, that's exactly what they want to have happen. You know, and it's, these businesses are also setting themselves up for this, this increase in, in theft because not only they're, it's not allowed for employees to make contact with these people who are stealing or anything, but if you go to any store, it's all self-checkout. It's all, then you have this receipt checker at the door where they have nothing. They can't stop you. Like there's not anything going down the line that's going to prevent someone from stealing. So why not? If, if businesses are making it easier for you to steal and there's no legal rep- repercussions, why not start stealing? Yeah, and I actually looked into that because there was a lot of virals recently about people who did the right thing, got their Walmart shopping cart full of things, and then they just bypassed that little um, greeter You know, when they, when they left. They didn't let them see their receipt. And there are a lot of these where the individuals became detained illegally, right? That's against the law. And so when it comes to things legally, at least from from what I've read, is that you, of course, are allowed to not be detained because you didn't show some some person at the the exit your receipt, except for in certain circumstances. So one of those is those big box stores like Costco's, for example. Um, Believe it or not, the reason why we do that is because when we sign up for a membership, when we literally sign up for a membership, we are promising and we are saying, I am going to let them see my receipt. It's actually in there. And so when it comes to other stores like Walmart's, where we didn't sign up for that, um, it's not against the law, but it is against store policy for you to not show your receipt when you leave. So what does that mean? Well, worst case scenario, you're going to be banned from Walmart. That's so drastic. Oh, man. So... (laughs) Here in the article, it says Walmart is reporting one of its stores closed in Atlanta's Vine City neighborhood after renovating. And it renovated pharmacy, groceries, and then unique and a, a new unique addition, which is a police station within the store. The approach aims to combat crime, increase security, and make shoppers feel safer, the company says. Now, I see a lot of problems all over this. I can understand at face value, if you have 
like an amateur robber, an amateur burglar, for example, um, they're, they might be deterred seeing a, a substation inside of a Walmart, just as they might be deterred if they see a unit parked outside of a Walmart store. However, just like the issue, I believe, with gun control, like if somebody still has the ambition to steal, they're still going to steal. They know that there are those little, what are those, like undercover? Like loss prevention. Yeah, they, yeah. they know that those exist within the store already. So if you have an officer or two hanging out in a substation, what exactly do they think is going to make the difference? It's a it's a perception thing more than anything, but... The, and this is how I look at it is it, it does it does reduce the statistics. It's never going to stop it completely. But it like I know with different businesses I've contacted in the past, like they always want to have a substation there because they think having officers coming in and out, it will deter people. And it, and it truly does. And the likelihood of an officer being there at that moment when that theft happens is very slim. Like most people, if they saw a cop hanging out right there, they're not going to try doing something, but not all these businesses is going to hire a cop to stand by their front door and just watch people coming in and out to, to, to stop theft. Like, because there's that opposite reaction is, well, why isn't that cop out on the streets preventing the homicide that just happened? So you, you have the pros and cons with it, and it's, it's not sustainable. I'm going to make a very, um, what I'm about to say, some people might completely hate. I believe that a lot of people that shop at Walmart might also be a lot of those same people that are in support of defund the police. So when we're talking about the perception I also feel like there's going to be a certain perception of those said individuals who don't want to see law enforcement at their local Walmart, even if they're not the bad guys. Yeah, it's it's they don't want they think that those officers are there just to violate their own rights and and target specific races for any for anything and everything. And, and which is not the case. And, and it's just it's just feeding into that that stigma that's associated to it. So here's my interpretation of this. If, if we were to have said, let's implement this three and a half years ago, or perhaps three and a half years from now, I, I believe that there could be a lot of great benefit to this and that the stats might be what they're anticipating it to be, especially when they've done a cost evaluation of, uh, you know, hiring. It's a very expensive to hire a police officer. However, I think that they're missing the mark because as inflation continues to grow, as crime rates just in general across the country continue to grow, which I believe is a direct result of our administration, right? That's what you can look at any article that you want to believe whatever research you want to, but I think it all comes down to a massive change that took place three years ago under this administration. Because of that, we need to look at the root cause, right? I, I titled, I used the word Band-Aid in the title of today's episode, and I think that's exactly what it is. Because when you're having so many other deeper social issues, like unemployment, poverty, addiction, I think having a police substation might deter amateur thieves, but for the people that are truly desperate or they're professionals, I don't think that they're gonna see this as a significant obstacle. No, they aren't at all. They're they're going to find more ingenuitive ways to conduct these thefts and, and continue them because that is their line of work. I understand a lot of people like steal shit to resell it and make money off of it, but I'm also wondering what what the stats would look like on the types of items that are being stole being stolen. And I'm saying that because I wonder if you were to see a big complaint that I'm seeing, I had a guy, um, he had posted something asking like, how much are you guys spending a day on yourselves? Like whether it's your bills or for food, like how much is it? And this ranged anywhere from like $20 a day for a person to like $130 a day for a person. And $130 a day might seem, seem crazy, but think about Truly, if you were to break down your costs and your expenses per day, like that's not a crazy number. I just had this conversation with my dad. He builds houses and just the prices of everything are about 40 percent more expensive now. And, you know, lumber is going back up again because of, 
you know, everybody's getting sick again. We'll just say that. And so I think that if we were to see, like, what are the items? I'm going to assume baby formula. Like, if it was things like that, like, let's just say beef jerky, okay? Because that's a cool, cool thing. I don't want to steal beef jerky. We make our own. But what if you created an outreach program instead, right? Like a community resource center where you can sign up and become a member. And, like, I think that trying things like that, maybe in addition to this, might actually be more beneficial and cost-effective than having to do what Walmart had to do for this one store in Atlanta. And the the biggest thing, and, and it's funny that you bring up that like outreach program in that, because in, in that grant that I wrote recently, like that is one of the biggest focuses that I had implemented within that grant is having community outreach, building those business relationships to provide that education and how to sustainably support these businesses long-term, not just on the short-term period. Like people go to Costco for the samples, right? Which is stupid. Like I would never touch those things, but wait, do they even have samples anymore? Yeah, they do. Okay. Cause I hadn't seen them actually the last few times that we went. <laughs> yeah. So how cool would it be if you had a, a big box store like Walmart get sponsorships from what's that beef jerky Jack's links or something? Jack links. Yeah get sponsorships from big companies like that. And then every day or every week, like, and I'm not saying it has to be some grandiose thing, but like, how cool would it be to get something like that for free? Remember going on vacation and having like a continental breakfast and they had those little boxes of cereal when we were kids. And that was like getting something special, right? Mm -hmm. Like people like getting free shit. So maybe instead of having everybody steal shit, you can make it normal for people to get free shit. You know, I think that, you know, might be a change. That's kind of what the community is asking for. I think that's why people are stealing so much. Or how cool would it be if you walk into the store and the greeter handed you a banana? Like, I would appreciate something like that walking into a store. And a banana is what, like a quarter? Yeah. Yeah. So let me know what your thoughts are. I hope you've gotten some value out of today's episode. If you have, do us a favor, drop a review, subscribe down below. And as always... Know that I'm sending you a long, tight hug from my home to yours.